reopen the regular meeting of the Bronxville Board of Trustees for July 8th, 2024, and ask all to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. I think we're here the hottest day of the year tonight, but uh, mayor's report is our start, and I just have a few things. As many of you know, we're working really hard on what I call the quality of life in the business district. And uh, folks have mentioned crossing double yellow lines, the scooters, double, triple parking, and just to mention, uh, we have, I guess the word is impounded, over 35 scooters that don't meet either registration, licensing, etc. Uh, we added our double yellow line crossing signs and the police chief said he feels like they're having a positive impact. And now that we're getting close to full complement in the police department, um, I don't think residents understand. We certainly didn't how the Byzantine process to hire a police officer. Um, but we're getting close to our full complement. And right now we have officers 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. in the business district doing um, walking patrol. Uh, and we just came out of a meeting and we're talking about making some small but effective changes near Craft and Park Place to make crossing there even safer. And I think um, we're going to be finishing the West Side Circle. Folks over near where I live are asking, uh, getting rid of those temporary sticks, bollards, whatever they are. So. Um, this summer is a lot of attention to the business district. Um, and I don't know if people saw, but a huge thank you to the uh, Bronxville Beautification Council. They just finished filling all the planters and they got a wonderful reception from residents. And every planter has been sponsored by either a merchant, a landlord, a resident, an organization. So um, thank you to everyone. And then just two things. I know people are leaving town this time of year. Just take a lot of precautions. And if you want to leave a key with the police department, I know people have been dropping them off. They're, they're very receptive, so if a, an alarm goes off or something, our PD will have your, your key. And now is the time of year to ask folks, uh, I'm not sure everyone knows they're responsible for their own sidewalks in front of their homes. So if you have a broken or cracked sidewalk, um, please, please try to fix it this summer. And also it goes as well to overhanging trees or hedges or shrubs that um, go into the village right of way. So just that's just a timely thing to do in the summer. So, um, but I would say we, summer is kind of um, business district focus for us. Um, and that's my report. Mary, you mentioned we're almost at full complement. Just touch on what the full complement means. Well, um, Bob, where are we? You're our, are we at 23 officers? And our goal is 24. Um, 25. 25, are, yes, I guess our, our um, and uh, well, just as example for those watching on television, if you, 
If we take folks who go through the regular police exam, often it's offered once a year, if that, and the first three uh, scorers, high scorers in the exam, have to get a job before you can go to score number four to 200. So if for some reason you didn't feel number one, two, or three fit in with neighborhood policing or, or kind of had the small town feel, we cannot go to any other police officer until those three people are hired. And sometimes I, in this job, it's been six to nine months before those folks are hired. So, you know, a lot of times people say to me, who wouldn't want to be a policeman in Bronxville? And a lot of people do, but the process is, um, uh, a civil service has a lot of rules. <laughs> so thank you for mentioning that. Um, all right, Mr. Palmer, Village Administrator's Report. Thank you, Mayor. Just, uh, just a couple items. Uh, Con Ed projects, uh, again, we limit Con Ed's gas installations to this time of year. We don't really have a choice in that they are replacing gas lines that have had multiple leaks and repairs, and repairs over time are even more inconvenient <clears throat> for homeowners. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So the uh, current projects are underway. Crow's Nest, new gas line in its entirety, that's gonna start any day. Homeowners along that route have been notified. The uh, work on Avon and Park Avenue continues. Kind of is almost off Avon and then we'll be on the loop on Park Avenue that extends into Tuckahoe. Uh, and the other project that we recognize is inconvenient for the uh, downtown business community. Uh, and then uh, the residences along Sagamore and Kensington is that uh, gas line installation uh, on Pond Field, some of which is being done overnight. Uh, and then the section on uh, Sagamore that's immediately out of the downtown is being done during the day with alternating traffic. But the part, the gas line installation on Pond Field that's between uh, Valley and uh, the Sagamore Circle there is done in the overnight hours to minimize disruption to the businesses. So we thank you, uh, we thank everyone for their patience. As always, after that work is done, the roads will be repaved in their, in, in their entirety. And then, of course, in the case of Palmfield, we're hoping to coordinate some of these other uh, sidewalk and uh, safety improvements at the same time. Uh, just also wanted to update the board on where we are with our stormwater projects, uh, our th uh, principally uh, three projects. One of the items that you have on your agenda for tonight is relying for the cap uh, establishment of a capital project for Paxton Avenue, and that's for the application that we're working with uh, Paul Paluzio and Palchetti and Associates for on upgrading, replacing all the infrastructure underground and at surface along pa Paxton Avenue, Lower Milburn, and Stone Place, along with improvements to the uh, paddle huts as well in the area along the Bronx River. And that's working in conjunction with FEMA and FEMA guidance uh, as a result of the um, presidential declaration for the uh, September 29th. 2023 storm event. So that work is uh, is underway, and at the same time, the engineer is evaluating the state's uh, state DEC's report on what can be done with the Bronx River from Bronxville up to Greenberg. What improvements can be made? Uh, Hamilton and Sussex uh, area, as the board knows, we met with residents. Uh, did some outreach. Met with residents of uh, Hamilton and Sussex. We also had residents from Homesdale in attendance. And uh, most recently, you authorized a purchase of a new uh, automated pump, which has been put in place on Hamilton. It's replaced the other one that we had there. This newer pump uh, turns the, the pump on automatically when the water in the, uh, in the catch basin gets to a certain point. And that was actually tested over the weekend, and the pumps did turn on, on their own and push the water down. So again, this is a very powerful pump. It's already pumping more than uh, six cubic feet per second uh, from the intersection of Hamilton up to Pondfield, and, uh, and the old pump was also pumping as well, and that's again to uh, uh, address that current condition there that um, the pipe 
on Hamilton that's uh, inverted and needs to be and needs to be replaced. As you know, we worked on scheduling another meeting with the uh, Holmesdale Sturgis uh, neighbors, uh, and unfortunately, uh, like a previous meeting, it's difficult to get con uh, it's difficult to get consensus this time of year, and frankly. Uh, I didn't get confirmation from one of the engineers uh, as well, uh, given that they were away, so we were uh, waiting to confirm that. So we recognize- Consensus on a date, right? What's that? Consensus on a date. date. Consensus on a date, right. So we recognize that time is of the essence, something absolutely needs to be done, and the board wants to be as transparent as possible, and therefore uh, absolutely want to uh, meet with the uh, Homesdale and those neighborhoods so they can understand what, um, uh, what's currently planned. So just tonight during our work session, thank you for giving me some specific dates. I'll follow back up with the engineers and uh, as soon as we get a confirmation on that and can um, consolidate our information, we will send out uh, the dates along with factual information and look for feedback in advance of that uh, meeting date. So we'll work on getting that out. The other piece I just wanted to update. And it will be a public meeting. Yes, and that, that will be a, a noticed uh, public meeting. Uh, notice public meeting, absolutely. Uh, yes. The other project ongoing is, of course, the Crawford drainage improvements, and uh, we discussed that. We discussed that during our uh, work session, and uh, I just returned an application back to the town today regarding some of the, um, the permit applications that, we, that they, the town needs to send into the DEC. Again, a, another very complex project given that the, uh, much of the improvements are gonna be on village land within the town of East Chester. So uh, anyway, we're making progress. We sent that MOU off to the, uh, the town. Uh, we're waiting for the town's feedback and um, yeah, just recognizing the times of the essence. So I wanted to uh, just mention that. And the only thing I'll just say on the on, uh, just as an update on the on-street dining, most of the establishments have now uh, reduced their area for your um, uh, guidance that we provided to all the merchants going back to last year. So that is most of them have cut their spaces to approximately half. Uh, taking up one parallel, uh, one parallel space, and the um, the build out of the new facility should be starting to take place in the uh, in the coming uh, in the coming weeks. And that is the um, some of the enhancements. Some of them have already, most of them have already reduced their footprint, but are still using the village uh, blocks. But the future, there'll be more planters. There'll be the black pollards, make it a little bit more attractive. So. We'll be working as we do with each of the merchants, and I think there's still one, one merchant who's going to be on the planning board's agenda for this week. But again, all of them have had the opportunity to come before the planning board to make a request to uh, have a new design. So, uh, you know, I think there was some confusion out there. But at no time did the village, I mean, the village board, grappled with this for, for years, quite frankly, and. Uh, listen to the survey information, and no one was told that they couldn't have a display, but there was a process for that, and that was to go before the planning board, present a plan, present a layout that's safe, functional for the particular location, recognizing that each is different. Um, and with that being said, they're all at different stages, but I think we're gonna end up with something that's attractive uh, and seasonal. And your estimate of how many parking spaces that were freed up as a result of this? Yeah, so I, I, and I think there are more than 16 spaces that are returned back to uh, merchants for public use. And I think that's, yeah, I, um, that's important to recognize because we, no merchant wanted to be pitted against another merchant, but yes, those, uh, many of those spaces were in key spots in the downtown. And uh, so another merchant might not want to face the other merchant that was usually them, but the point is they're back in circulation and I think it's good for merchants too. I think um, in my view, a special thank you to the non-food merchants in our village that have been um, such partners with, because my colleagues in other villages had to get rid of these on-street dining because the non-food folks were sort of 
like COVID's been over, their patience waned, and I just think the cooperation between the what I call the dry good merchants versus the food merchants has been, I think, amazing. People have been so kind to each other. And 16 spaces in the business district is a lot of parking. So I'm, I'm glad it's happening. So. Um, and good job, Jim, take, seeing that through. A lot of complex issues, yeah. some stressful conversations. So thank you for that. Thank, thank you. Yes. Um, <laughs> trustees, any other events or did I forget? Do you want to talk about what's going on in front of the school? Why don't you, Mayor, so, you've been a point person over okay. at the so school. If you probably have driven by the on Pondfield in front of our um, public school, Bronxville Public School over there. Um, new trees are going in. That was a, a, a village funded um, event. They're on, they're on this um, village property. So we agreed to fund those along with irrigation. Uh, there is also a new sidewalk going in that it's giving more um, plant bed for our trees that are going in. So the, the sidewalk's going to move approximately a foot and it's also going to be increased by a foot. So it'll be a larger sidewalk. The school is handling that. And uh, they're about halfway through the project. You can see uh, on half of it, two trees on Midland and about five or six trees on Pondfield so far are in and they're, they're stunning. They're, they're all beautiful. They're going to provide over the years a great canopy for heat reduction and um, and coolness along the sidewalk area for the school children, and they'll all match. Um, and the, the rest of the project should be done over the next week or so, if, if not before then. He's moving quite quickly. So, and it looks beautiful. So, and we thank the school for taking on that project, and I think we contributed our amount, and we feel good about that. Exactly, well said. Just yeah. um, two events that, that um, some of us uh, attended recently, uh, the, earlier in June, um, we were thrilled to be part of the dedication for the new library outdoor reading garden. Um, so anybody who's here or on TV, if you haven't been over to that reading garden in the back of the library, it's just, it's a beautiful space now. Um, it's fully landscaped, there's uh, benches, the architecture has been so thoughtfully uh, planned that it really is, it's a increase in the use of the outdoor space for groups and children and adults of all ages to come and read and, and have activities. Um, but it really is in such great keeping with the historic architecture of the building. Um, so I commend, and we all commend all the people, trustees of the library, the friends of the library, uh, the many generous residents who donated to that project. It's really a great addition to our village. And, and speaking of other enhancements, again, many of us went to the uh, Bronxville Beautification Committee uh, garden party last weekend, which was also at a home uh, right across from the, the library. And they, it's an annual fundraiser they do. I know you, you've hosted it also. And it's just such a great organization that really um, does so many of the beautiful plantings in our business district. And as part of the fundraiser, they uh, sold, um, uh, or the, they raffled off and, and sold planters. And I believe all of the planter opportunities were taken up, you know, immediately in the first day. So uh, if you look around the, the community, you'll see these planters with the names of the people who donated uh, to it. So it's just one of the things that makes this village so special to th see things like that that are donated by community members and run by local volunteers. Thank you. And Mary's speech was amazing. That The quote, your garden quote, oh, do, you re do you remember it? I Can do. Can you share it? Well. <laughs> I don't mean to put you on the spot. <laughs> no, I can't remember. <laughs> it was pretty long. It was, it it was, was a long, long one. Right, was, right. You include it in the, in the newsletter next time. I, it good was point. A beautiful quote. Yes. I'll think of it before the end of the night. <laughs> yes. Well, Mayor, I just forgot one thing on the school trees. I wanted to say that they were native and non-invasive trees, and that was very important good, for us. That is, um, yes, because we worked really hard with their landscaper to make sure that they were putting things in that were not just attractive but were um you know uh, native yes thank you mary gentlemen did we forget anything uh mayor i just want to add a footnote to uh, one of the village administrators comments about um the crawford improvements uh because i think all of us get some questions from from time to time from <laughs> residents in, in the area and i think 
it, it is true that a number of the improvements, important improvements being contemplated are on village property. Uh, other aspects of those improvements are going to involve East Chester, and there is coordination that the village has been undertaking with the town of East Chester to make sure that we come up with a holistic solution to a problem that uh, impacts residents in, in both of our communities. And uh, I, I think sometimes that coordination uh, adds an extra layer of time and effort uh, above uh, the complications just from the engineering and getting the engineering right. So although it may be frustrating, I think that the, the message is, is that uh, we're endeavoring to work with all deliberate speed consistent with also getting the engineering right and getting the ultimate solution uh, right. But uh, I, I think the, uh, the village administrator's comments probably uh, underplayed the amount of time that he in particular is spending on, on some of these uh, issues to, to move forward. Alrighty. Okay, I think that's um, so Helen, um, I'm going to let you do the introduction to our special guest here tonight. So. <laughs> Drum roll, please. Drum roll, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so another thing that makes our town so special, I think, is um, we have an incredibly vibrant business district. And I think part of the success of our business district uh, is due to our incredibly active Chamber of Commerce. So we're thrilled to have um, Leslie Corcoran with us, who is the executive director of the Chamber of Commerce, and Vanessa O'Friel, who is the president of the Chamber of Commerce, to give us an update on the activities and um, the wonderful summer events that are in store. Some of us attended the, um, the car show and concert kickoff a few weeks ago, which was fantastic, so yeah. Do you want to stand up with the no. microphone? Oh, Peter, is there a microphone? Peter? Yes, I can hear you. My headphone. Oh, but is there a microphone for the speakers? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just give us one minute while you're good. It's nothing personal, Vanessa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you both for coming, really. Uh, Yes, 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 oh, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. and my other one was Booker T. Washington, I realized, oh, yes, so now yes. I'm, it's coming to me, it's coming to me, so. Yeah, the Cicero one was yes, yes. The, have a, book if, a garden, if, a library in a garden, a library in a garden. If you have a library in a garden, that's all you, you need, have you, you need. have everything, yes, thank you. And a And a chair. <laughs> <laughs> Cicero didn't know everything, no, right? No, no. <laughs> oh, great. I'll just ask Vanessa while, while he's putting up that microphone, is, is, is your business as busy as in the summer? Is that a busy well, time? Well, we just, you know, we, let's say that we're just talking. You think that you're going to catch up all those projects in the summer and, oh, it'll be so quiet, and then you start to see September quickly coming yeah. up in SAT classes and ACT classes and things like that. So mm -hmm. we have a tutoring business, so it's... Yeah. All right, let me start again. Um, I'm Vanessa O'Friel. I'm the president of the Chamber of Commerce here in Bronxville, and we are delighted to be a part of uh, the business district and to be a part of supporting all the events that go on here in the village. We kicked off our summer music series with car show and concert over uh, on the west side. Is that how we refer to it? Yes. Um, the West Side, which was, we were really privileged to have a lovely evening, a beautiful, yeah. uh, sunny, cool, um, yet warm enough night, and the cars were especially sparkly that night, I thought. Um, <laughs> and sorry. Leslie's favorite cover band played her favorite song, so that was fitting. Uh, Steely Dan. Off, Steely Dan. Um, and it was, there were people of all ages, and and people from visiting from out of town and, and within our town, it was just a really wonderful kickoff. We have several other concerts planned for this summer, um, as well as many events into winter time. We're going to have PJs at the picture house and a tree lighting, which we need to discuss, and all sorts of things like that. 
Um, part of my job is to really make sure that I am sponsoring or helping the merchants who are on our board who are um, to promote business, to support business. Uh, we have monthly meetings, as you may know, and at those meetings sometimes things are brought up about planning and uh, how decisions are made uh, for new businesses, and so I thought it might be best if I had more of a presence here, um, and I thank you for uh, letting me attend your meeting, um, to be able to tell our merchants how some of the things work in town. Um, and as you know, you, you invite people to things and sometimes they don't come, and so we do the same thing. We, I've tell, told them about these meetings and they can come and they can voice their opinions. Maybe that might be me. Maybe we'll have some more, <laughs> yeah. some more um, attendees in the future. But I thought it would just be a good idea to present ourselves to you and to make sure that you know that we are here in support of the village um, and that we hope that we have your support as well to make sure that all of our businesses are long lasting, that they come from all different towns. Um, we have found that so many businesses come here and they stay because why wouldn't you? Everything's in walking distance and pleasant and um, we have families who grow up with these businesses. So it's in everyone's interest to make sure that we have a diverse and uh, lovely business district, which I feel that we do. So it's thank you very much for letting me come and, and uh, introduce myself to you. Vanessa, I was, I was um, looking at some minutes of another town hall yes. um, from another town and like at the beginning remarks, part of somebody does an update of the business district and they mention like the new businesses that have just opened in the past month. So I don't know, maybe that's something we could just, you know. I think that's a great idea to have yeah. uh, periodic updates as to the health and vibrancy of the community. Absolutely, I think so many things have been, even what Mr. Palmer was talking about, the scooters, you know, that has become a concern for um, some of our other merchants if the scooters are parked right in front of their businesses. So that was brought up at our meeting. Um, similarity of businesses um, was also brought up and that's something that I think is, is good to have some transparency. Um, businesses are selling different uh, merchandise and you know, it's, it's, everyone's welcome to have their own, their, own, uh, their own work and their own business. So yes, so those things, I think that would be great to have um, a little update, um, a running list of, of yeah. all the new ones that come along. Yeah. And what percentage of the businesses are in the chamber? I mean, I know it's an optional thing to join in, but Leslie, you've told me in the past. Uh, you know, there's a decent amount, if I had to say percentage-wise, probably like 80. Yeah, 80%, 80, 80 and 85%. There's a lot of like smaller businesses, um, you know, in, in the offices that don't have storefronts. That, you know, Professional. Some, some, some that you probably don't even know are there. I didn't know until I started doing this, but some of them remember some of them are in the 150 members in the chamber yeah. and you guys have done an amazing job to really show the perks of, of and the benefits of being members you know that you they the, the business is really it's not a favor they're doing they really de derive a lot of benefit we have increased and, our social media which is free advertising for merchants mm -hmm. um, we focus on a different business uh, every other day and we have a great person on our board who is who can do reels and small little videos and really spotlight and highlight some of the things that are being sold and it's just uh, it's a good way to reach people who may not even realize that those businesses um, sort of and your, your weekly emails are fantastic good. The chamber chatter yeah yes how how yeah that's <laughs> Leslie that's all Leslie and she Come on over. Yeah, that's extraordinary. How many people get those? Because I think that's been. Talking to them. Do you mind talking into the microphone? Oh, I have yeah. A couple of different um, categories, but the, the the majority go to my community list, which consists of about two thousand people. Good. Okay. And, um, <clears throat> I'm sure there's a few dupes in there, but um, so like what you were saying about uh, mentioning new businesses, like that would be a good place to. I, I put everything in there and I try to do it date wise and time wise mm -hmm. and some things you don't want too far in advance or they're going to forget about it um, 
But um, yeah, and so depending on how busy we are, there's times where I send one four times a week and there's, you know, it's been a little quiet. So I've been averaging like twice a week. I'll usually do one on a Monday and then one on a Thursday. I didn't send one yet today because I'm waiting for one more thing because the, um, you know, the Bronxville Pops that uh, yeah. play yeah. on uh, Wednesdays starting, they started last Wednesday. <clears throat> so we got, um, Underhills is gonna do a picnic dinner um, and they're putting together a menu and uh, they will, you can order it the day of no later than two or three and they'll deliver it here uh, by the flagpole. So I'm just waiting for the, um, the menu nice. ad from Underhills and so uh, what a fun, what, what a, fun a great day. idea. What day will that be last Ron, Ron Lapinto uh, is the, uh, runs it. Um, it's when, every Wednesday in July, starting at 8 o'clock in front of the Bronxville School on and, the lawn. And what day will the Underhills? Um, um, they're going to do it this Wednesday. They're going to try and do it every Wednesday between now and uh, whatever the last, oh, yeah, great. I think it's the 31st. Wow. Um, will, will you be able to get on the lawn with the construction of the sidewalk and the trees? Well, they had it last Wednesday. Okay. So I guess that's okay. a good question. Oh, yeah. I can yeah. check with. Just, I would double check, yeah. Um, I'll see if Ron. Because um, they've got a lot of it blocked off right spoke now. Spoke to anybody about that? Because I don't know how. Um, I don't know. I didn't go to the one last Wednesday. I'll figure it out. I was on my list, but yeah. yeah. What did you say? No, I was just saying I was going to reach out to the contractor. I, I yeah, I think they can make it accessible with even if they don't go all the way. Yeah, up they, to, they're pretty. Yeah. They usually wind up being pretty close to the school because I think they use the. Um, uh, yeah, no, it's it's residents getting to the con, you know to the grass area. Like the meadow entrance is open right now. Yeah, maybe okay. maybe they limit and keep that area open. People yeah, just yeah. go in closer to meadow, you know, and yeah. down. That's all. But. So uh, that's just a fun little plug that. Um, that's fantastic. And you should hear what they're serving. I don't want to tell you. <laughs> I'm going to surprise you, but it sounds great. Yeah. yeah. And, Ooh. Um, we don't have any types of collaborations within the town. It's, mm -hmm. And you know, um, that seems like a natural keyword because we're trying to have uh, chamber member meetings once a month. We Last year we probably had three or four and this year we've had, we've already had about three or four. Um, and it's, a, it's just great for, there's so many people that belong to the chamber that don't know each other. Um, new people, uh, people that have belonged but never even went to any of these meetings, people that have rejoined and renewed their membership. And um, they meet each other and they have like businesses that would go well with each other, although not identical. And there's been a few people that have done some cute mixed up things um, with themes and um, we want to like encourage more of that because it'll be nice marketing uh, for both of them. And um, yeah, it is, a, it is a great downtown and um, I mean, I, I went to a baby shower on Saturday and I went into Silver Spoon and they put this beautiful gift together for me. And um, I took a video and I posted it on social media, just, you know, with that song, so Nobody Does It Better by Carly Simon, because really that store <laughs> is the best children's store in the country, I think. Um, but, you know, and we, we love the, the, the merchants make this, you know, make it vibrant. Make it, make it vibrant. You all make it vibrant. <laughs> if I heard correctly, you said you have a, an email list for residents who might be interested in keeping abreast of what's oh, yeah. happening. So, I so, 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 so how should people contact you well, to get on best, that list? The best way to do this, and maybe I'll add it in my email tonight, is if you go on the Chamber website, roxfieldchamber.org, and go all the way to the bottom of the page, and it says uh, subscribe to Chamber Chatter, and you just put your name and email in, and, and you're in. And um, I can add you manually if you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's, do you get it? It's really cool. It no, really I don't. Very I, my, my, my wife may get it, which uh. is more effective. <laughs> but, um... you know, but between um, between that and between what the village sends out, and between um, my hometown, Bronxville, and mm -hmm. you know, there, there is a lot of information to get out there from yeah, right. various, you know. Um, causes and whether it's the green committee or the beautification yeah. council or restaurants or promoting and, 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 and yeah, yeah. Do I do work. know you talked about Silver Spoon and then La Casa and they both won the best 
best Mexican restaurant in Westchester and best baby store in Westchester. We just have to, we have to, no. we have have to get the, best chamber. Yes, we, we did see that someone else won best chamber. Helen won best chamber. That's all right. We're going Helen? to. But we, we have to. Was it I don't, Yeah, but I don't think that we've. We haven't applied. I don't think we've not, applied. It's not that we, we lost. lost. We just all right. Applied. Yeah. You got to be in it yeah, to win it. it you know? Yes. I don't think I voted on that one. I no. Did, yeah. No. Yeah. All right. Next year, we will. Too. We'll Perfect. All right. Well, thank you, thank you thank both. You. Thank you. You do a terrific job. You really do. Thank you. All right. I think uh, approval of minutes. We have executive committee work session meeting minutes of June 10th, as well as our annual meeting and the regular meeting of June 10th. Do I have someone to move the approval of both sets of minutes? So moved. And a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. And uh, Deputy Mayor, I thought, would you like to, um, we talked about trying to get up to a full complement of police officers, and our first resolution is authorizing the appointment of a new officer. That's great. Thanks, Mayor. Um, this is a resolution authorizing the appointment of Christopher Layton as police officer. Whereas there exists an opening for the full-time position of police officer with the village of Bronxville. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the village board of trustees appoint Christopher Layton of Congers, New York, to the position of police officer at the second year police officer salary effective today, Monday, July 8, 2024, or the earliest date authorized by Westchester County Department of Human Resources. Mr. Layton's appointment is also subject to a 52-week probationary period, in addition to the other terms and conditions of the current collective bargaining agreement with the Bronxville PBA. Perfect. And, and, and by way of note, he did start today. Yeah. Oh, yes. well, perfect. Yes, in this case, right, I'll just take out the, uh, the earlier date of human resources since at the time yes. uh, we got confirmation, as you know, over uh, just before the weekend. And so, so I'd yes. also yep. like to add that we, uh, all of us as village trustees also serve as police commissioners and had the opportunity to interview Christopher and we couldn't be more thrilled to have someone of his uh, experience, training, and stature, and personality join this police force. Um, so I'd like to move for adoption of this resolution. All right. I will second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. All right, Mr. Palmer, do you want to announce we had Mr. Taff in our building department uh, decided to retire after working very hard for a very long time. So. We wish him well, and now we have to um, kind of revisit our building department. Yes, and uh, so with this resolution, you're just uh, appointing the uh, assistant building inspector who's uh, been in that role <coughs> uh, and as experienced as a building inspector as well, uh, as acting uh, building inspector. Uh, yeah. And um, again, uh, Kevin's been working with Paul, and he's um, uh, he's more than capable to serve in that acting role. I what, can attest he does a terrific job. Can I just ask Jim um, the span between an acting and then the appointment of a uh, regular permanent position? Are we are we going to reconvene again to discuss? Uh, the appointment of a building inspector? Absolutely, because that would also be subject to the requirements of New York State Civil Service, which just a county review mm -hmm. and uh, your approval. Yep. This is just authorizing that, uh, putting Kevin in that uh, acting role and pursuant to what's uh, permitted under Chapter 112, right? But at the end of the day, we'll, we'll follow that same process for building inspector, which is uh, a uh, civil service position from an approved building inspector list uh, authorized by the county, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good question. Yeah. All right. I'd like to move it. A second? Second. All those in favor? 
Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, Mayor, I'd just like to say that I think I'd probably be remiss if I didn't also join in your comments thanking Mr. Taft for his services as Chairman of the Zoning Board. Uh, uh, Stuart McIntosh, the current chair of the zoning board, and I worked with Mr. Taft on putting together uh, various zoning uh, reforms, which this board adapted some years ago. And I know, he, I know he's taken some steps to um, move uh, to a more computerized uh, electronic uh, office, but I just uh, most importantly would like to join your uh, wishes of uh, wishing him the best for his uh, future plans and, and thanks for his time with the village. That's terrific, because I know you worked quite closely with him, Bill, so thank you. All right, now we have an appointment of senior bookkeeper, and I see our treasurer is here who uh, works, uh, he's really training Liam and uh, works fabulously with them, so. I know you, I can tell Never you seen know. Lori happier. <laughs> I know, Lori, yes. <laughs> For those watching on TV, the treasurer is smiling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> he is a wonderful, he's worked here during the summer. I've known him, went to Bronxville School, Fordham, he's got accounting degrees. Uh, he's a wonderful addition. Exceptionally qualified. And of course, our deputy treasurer is absolutely amazing, but there's a lot of work that flows yeah. through that office, and not the least of which is that, again, the, the only village that serves as the collecting agent, the receiver of taxes for the school district that's not a determinist right. village town. So that in of itself makes up two really busy times of the year. So anyway. Um, so yes. I will move to hire Liam Siegel to that position. Do we have a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. And now we go back to the building department, correct? Yes, and this is for uh, retaining the professional services of uh, KSCJ, that's Keller Sessions Carmelli and uh, Johannesson Consulting, uh, and this would be for uh, planning and engineering services. As background, we always have planning and engineering services for the planning board and zoning board as needed, and uh, we would be utilizing this firm for the first time for that, uh, for that service. Uh, but they provide this service already for other towns and villages throughout Westchester. They're more than capable. They know the community. Uh, but in addition, it would give us the opportunity to uh, consolidate some of our other uh, consulting functions uh, with them and give them a test and see how they do. And I've listed some of those in the resolution, but they do have expertise again in uh, plan review, engineering review, uh, and again, for larger commercial projects, of course, we have escrow accounts set up. Uh, and then for smaller projects, as you know, we now have uh, stormwater reviews uh, and uh, an application fee associated with those. The consultants attend planning and zoning board meetings. They make recommendations. And, and of course, something that we've, uh, the board has discussed at length is having a, a firm take a close review of our existing zoning code take into account some of the discussions with the uh, the merchants in the Chamber of Commerce community. It's uh, take a look at the zoning code downtown, all the zoning districts, and uh, as well as some of the processes within the billing department and uh, provide us with recommendations. And a firm that has all these expertise under one, to one roof and provides them already to other communities, that seems to be a benefit that's worth giving them a try. Jim, is there a uh, retainer payment associated with this, or is this just to get them lined up and then they're paid on an as-needed, as approved On an as-needed basis, subject to those hourly rates, which are consistent with others. <laughs> yeah. All righty, I will move that to hire this consulting firm. A second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. All right, I'm gonna ask the deputy mayor, since, um, <laughs> Officer Leighton probably needs a police car. Would you like to move the? Uh... Yeah, so we are, um, which is interesting. We're actually, um, this resolution is, is uh, for the purchase of a hybrid 
a police car, which is the first, I think that's the first this is gym. Dave. Yep. It's the, the first, first time we're getting cars. into yep. um, a more fuel efficient um, SUV. SUV for the police force. So that's, that's very exciting. So um, there's no need to read the resolution, is there? Mayor? No, okay. just that I'll, we're. I'll move it. I will just, I will just add that we discussed this at the Green, uh, the Community uh, Climate Task Force. And they asked, well, why, why aren't both vehicles hybrid? And Stephen did uh, some research into the, that question because the, uh, the second one is an Explorer, the Limited. Um, apparently, that's an administrative vehicle. So it needs more electronic uh, capabilities. That well, the, it too is environmentally friendly. Just it's environment, that, yes. That yes. EcoBoost is also it's energy eco -boost. efficient, even though it's running on a six cylinder. Yeah. So, yes, it's yes. that's not a traditional six cylinder. It's yes. worth noting. So, absolutely. So all to say yeah. that the, the, the PD is doing as much as they can to um, you know, go down the path of being more environmentally aware in their vehicle and consistent purchases. with the policy that you set for exactly yeah. yeah perfect so you want to move it? oh I, i'm moving you moved it. it we I'll need a second. Yeah. I'll second all those in favor aye. aye opposed motion passes and i should just say on that of course as you know we try to stick on a replacement schedule uh with those vehicles so the old vehicles are not going to go to waste we'll strip them down remove the uh uh specific name detail and yeah, we'll put them into circulation either with the parking enforcement or well, someone else yeah, for Stephen and I to use as needed. Yeah. Okay. And then we're on to uh, capital project uh, for yes, Mulpey. And, yes, and this, just what we were saying earlier, with all that uh, with all the work that we're undertaking there, uh, right. we're at the point now where the treasurer wanted to set up a, uh, a capital project for that uh, scope of work that we're still undertaking with FEMA. Oh. And, and again, that takes into account, um, could be a very, uh, very complex uh, project, but looking at that whole area holistically, and that includes Stone Place, Lower Milburn, Paxton Avenue, uh, Maltby Park, the paddle courts, all to be funded through uh, FEMA. And so this is, this is just authorizing the establishment. Establish the capital project. So I right. will move it. Okay. And then uh, do I'll I have a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Mm -hmm. and, and Mary, I, again, I think hats off to yes. village administrator, village treasurer for being alert to the opportunities to try to get grant money from other sources. I mean, that's such an art just to find the right grants and then to follow through on them. And I really think that you know, dollar for dollar, you know, investing in getting grant money is probably one of the most efficient things that. Uh, the folks at Village Hall do, and I'm just constantly amazed. It seems you know every every month there's another area where they've you know, found a way to help effectively uh, you know, reduce village tax burden by finding grants which less diligent public officials would you know, not bring to our attention or follow up on. So thanks again, Jim and Lori. Yeah, good. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, all right. Did we move that? Correct. We're yes, all set yes, with that. Yes. All right. Then we jet sewer vacuum truck. Yes. Um, this is an expensive item, but Mr. Palmer, you m might want to mention, um, frankly, how much we need it, given our basins have to be clean during the um, the rainy season, which seems to be all year round now. <laughs> Sure. So this is right. So this proposal for you would be uh, to authorize the acquisition of what we call a jet sewer vacuum truck, and that is um, a vacuum truck that has uh, the capability of sucking efficiently and effectively removing the deeply embedded sediment, sand particles, and other debris that collects into the uh, catch basins and conveyance system, and for the public's edification, we have approximately 500 catch basins, and we utilize to date a private contractor to do that work. It's harder to obtain that private contractor if we had the vehicle in-house done by staff. Uh, then we have more uh, 
more flexibility in when they're cleaned and can quite frankly be on a regular maintenance program with cleaning those catch basins because I think everyone in the community recognizes that we have many vulnerable areas and we want to maximize the space in that catch in those catch basins and again there's just so much debris that's coming from all the all the services uh, permeable and um, non-permeable surfaces for that matter uh, and over time it just uh, it thickens and you need to utilize a machine that uh, has a powerful vacuum that's capable of removing that debris so um, it is an expensive vehicle uh, I think I had put it on the capital plan in past years as an idea but uh, other items take precedent and uh, but again I just think we're, we're we're at that point now with the level of cleaning that we need to do and how frequent we've been bringing a private contractor in that we need to take a closer look. And it just so happens that these vehicles, unlike a lot of vehicles that have been getting larger, this vacuum truck uh, is slightly smaller, so it's easier to navigate in some of our tight areas like the hilltop. I really think that's unique. Some of the larger ones are definitely more complex for uh, DPW officials. but. No pun intended, but we haven't looked at, we, we, we didn't look at this in a vacuum. We did have the DPW also partake in a demonstration, had the company come out. Um, so I wanted to present that to you. You want to give the cost? So people I did. Uh, well, I'll say it was, the cost is 418000 uh, Stephen is working on a grant which would, would reimburse us for 25% of that, so just over 100000 through the Department of Environmental Conservation. And, of course, we're also seeking out uh, other sources. So how, how, mu how, how much more often would the catch basins be cleaned if we had our own truck versus using cook? Using cook, yeah. Just on average. I know it varies from basin to basin, but would we go from, you know, once a year to three times a year, just or once every other year? Uh, to twice you a year? know what? I, I think um, it's a fair question. Need to map this out with the uh, with our foreman, but where. Uh, right now, we've been uh, doing uh, all the catch basins at least once every four years. Uh, the goal will be to cut that in half, because really what we've been doing is we've been having the private contractor go to the problem areas multiple times a year uh, in certain neighborhoods, but ideally we would be getting to every catch basin in the village uh, at least every other year. That would be our goal. And I just have one last question. Where does the, where does the stuff go after it's in the truck? The stuff that's been extracted. Then that, uh, that that gets disposed of through our agreement with the town of East Chester, where it's then uh, hauled away. And yeah. you you told us uh, earlier that the useful life of this truck is 15 years, and if it's serviced properly or maintained, you can squeeze out a little bit more. Maybe you could squeeze out a few more years, and the plan would be to keep it within our new brand new beautiful DPW building inside so that would obviously increase hopefully increase the life maybe beyond the 15 years absolutely yes we're gonna we're not gonna put this out in the rain and, except you know, I think it's years. it's important to mention that um, the payback on this could be depending upon whether you've received the grant or not between seven and eleven years so that's a, yeah it seems like it makes a lot of financial yeah. sense as mm -hmm. well All right, I okay, shall I'll move it. And I'll second it. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. And Mayor, forgive me one more time for injecting a post vote comment. Uh, I, I, I'm going to make this a little bit of a pet peeve going forward when we hit the leaf season again, but I think that we need more public education in the village about what goes into the storm drains. And what goes into the storm drains? What should go into the storm drains? One thing, one thing only, storm water. So leaves, twigs, garbage, other stuff that you see that's sort of on the edge of a storm drain, uh, you know, it, you're being a good citizen if you get it out of harm's way and on the curb so it doesn't go in to the drains because then we have to clean it. And we're talking about spending you know, 400,000 or 300,000 if we get a grant, you know, you know, to clean this stuff out. A certain amount is, is necessary, but I think we, if we just had better education to reduce some of the volume of stuff that went in, 
you know, we'll all do a better job of keeping on top of the problem. And when we have a problem, it impacts residents of the village. It increases flooding, it increases drainage problems. As the village administrator said, you know, we're trying to keep our you know, 1920s era drainage system up to date, modernized and effective. But I think you know, we, you know, we can all you know, try to try to do it. We had some discussion about the work session, you know, adopt a, a storm drain or, or whatnot. But I, I, I just think that sort of like picking up litter, you know, the village would all be better if you, know, you see a piece of litter, you can pick it up rather than start saying, well, DPW will come and pick it up. You know, at some point, you, know, you see you know, some twigs by a storm drain or something that's on the verge of going to a storm, you know, pick it up, you know, move it aside. And, and in a small way, it's, it's helping. So just, just my pet peeve reminder to residents, that the only thing that should go into stormwater drains is stormwater. Period. I think that was a great public service announcement. Excellent. Excellent. And thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then we have our final resolution about police department body cameras. I body know this, cameras. Yes, and this is uh, the, the uh, essentially the police department is. Um, Changing the vendor that they're using for the the, uh, the body cameras, for the for the 12 new cameras that they're purchasing, and uh, this was this was a lot of back and forth, Lori, with the with the chief. Thank you for following this uh, so carefully. But again, a, a clarification for 12 cameras switching from uh, Motorola, the police department was not satisfied with to Axon body cameras that the police department subsequently researched at length. Uh, and here the treasurer also noted the licensing costs associated with these. So uh, you're authorizing the transfer of the uh, additional monies necessary through um, prior debt service that was already established um, for these uh, 12 cameras and remaining funds from unassigned. Did we get, my question was, should we get any refund if these cameras were, were you know they? You know what, we, ne um, we never, we ended up not taking uh, Possession, Possession of, them? of them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Possession that was yeah. just my question. So we didn't buy what we didn't like. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. All right. Then I shall move that. Do I have a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And these Opposed? are just, these have been a very important tool for our, oh, yeah. our force. And you know, I think it's important for people to know, I believe if we weren't the first, we were in the first one or two, our officers immediately said they would wear the body cameras, where there were other departments where they went through labor negotiations. Our guys were, and gals were amazing, just saying, sure, if you get them, we'll wear them. Yep. So, um, As the chief said, to be effective, they need to be turned on when they need to be turned on, and he's not had a problem with that. They right. Turn them on. Perfect. All righty, trustees, did we forget? We usually, uh, traditionally, do not meet in August, but of course, if they're uh, formally meet in August, but of course, we're going to do a, um, a, a stormwater meeting for our neighbors up in the Hamilton, Homesdale, Sussex. That's going to happen, and, and Mr. Palmer knows if anything has urgency, we post and meet well, I mean, um, yep, yep. If, if you we should meet. So. And so our next meeting, formal meeting in this room is September 9th. So I just wish everyone a wonderful summer and a wonderful time until then. And again, if you're going away for a long time, just let our PD know. Um, and do I have a motion to oh, close? Oh, can I just say, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, yeah. Could you make it, I think you were gonna make a motion to go into an executive session to discuss a personnel matter though. I do, do have, have to do that, very important. So, uh, council leave, should I go executive session and not close this meeting? You can close the regular meeting and then go into executive session. Either I way can. you want. Yeah, Either you way, all right, a motion to close this meeting. So moved. And a second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And then we will stay, uh, trustees, and a uh, motion to go into executive session. Thank I, you very much. All right, I need someone to move that. I'm yet. I'm yet. Second. Okay, all those all in right. favor? Right. Okay. Thank you.